Hello. Ansoff is an antenna simulation software. In this video, we will learn to model two basic antennas, a half-wave dipole and a Yagi Yuta antenna. This black screen is the workspace. It is the place where we can draw the antenna structure. But, before drawing the antenna, we have to define the frequency and media. So, we have to go to the Configure tab. In the Frequency panel, we will set a frequency of 300 MHz. If we calculate the wavelength at 300 MHz, we will obtain a wavelength of 1 meter. Therefore, if we want to draw a half-wave dipole, it must be 0.5 meters long. Regarding media, we will set a free space simulation. Then, the relative permittivity and permeability will be equal to 1. And we will not add a ground plane. So, having defined the frequency and media, we will go back to the workspace. By right-clicking on the screen, a pop-up menu will be displayed, where we will choose the line option. A windows will appear where we can set the coordinates of the starting and ending points of the line. In this example, we will draw a line along the z-axis, so we will only write the z1 and z2 coordinates. The line will be centered about the origin of coordinates. We can see the Cartesian coordinate axes in the bottom left corner of the screen. Then, we will set Z1 as minus 0.25 meters, and Z2 as 0.25 meters. After that, we will go to the Attributes page, where we can set the number of segments and the wire cross section. Ansoff always proposes the minimum number of segments. We will use more segments than the minimum in order to obtain a higher resolution in the current distribution. We will set a circular cross section having a radius of 5 mm. After clicking OK, a line will be shown in the workspace. Now, we will put a voltage source in the linear wire. If we right-click on the line, a pop-up menu will be shown, where we can choose the source slash load option. Then, a slider or track bar will be shown. By moving the cursor along the track bar, we can select an individual segment in the wire. So, we will position the cursor at the center of the track bar. We can see that we are positioned at segment number 9 of 17, or at the 50% of the line. Now, we will click on the Add Source button to add a voltage source. We will set a voltage source having 1 volt in amplitude and 0 phase. After clicking OK and closing the track bar, we will be ready to run the calculation. We will click on the Run Currents and Far Field button in the toolbar to start the calculations. After the process is completed, we can right-click on the wire and choose the Plot Currents option to plot the current distribution. As we can see, we have obtained a semi-cycle of a sine function, as it is expected for a half-wave dipole. However, it is not a perfect sine function, since it has a discontinuity in the slope at the center, where the voltage source is positioned.
This slope discontinuity is due to the boundary conditions imposed by the presence of the voltage source at the antenna terminals. We can also plot the phase distribution along the dipole antenna, as well as the real and imaginary parts. Now, we will plot the radiation pattern. To plot the 3D radiation pattern, we have to click on the Far Field 3D Plot button in the toolbar. We have obtained a donut-shaped radiation pattern as expected. So, the radiation pattern is omnidirectional in the XY plane since the dipole is oriented along the Z-axis. The plotted result is the power density or pointings vector, but we could also plot the antenna gain. The gain is a dimensionless number. In the color bar, we can see that the maximum gain is of 1.65, which is very close to the theoretical value of 1.64 that would be obtained for an infinitely thin half-wave dipole. Now, we will add two more wires to this project in order to build a three-element Yagi Yuta antenna. As you maybe know, a Yagi antenna is a directional antenna, which consists of several linear elements that are parallel to each other. We can use the staking function in Ansoft to add two more parallel wires. So, we will go to the Edit menu, and we will choose the Stack Wires option. As the stacking axis, we will choose the Y axis. The staking distance is the spacing between the wires. We will set 0.2 meters. And we will also set the total number of wires of the array, that will be 3. Then, we will get 3 identical wires. Nevertheless, this array is not a Yagi antenna yet. We have to modify the lengths of at least two wires. The left wire will be the reflector element, so we will increase its length. In the pop-up menu we will choose the modify option to do this. We will add one centimeter at each wire end. Now, we will decrease the length of the wire at the right in order to convert it in the director element of the Yagi antenna. In this case, we will subtract 3 cm from each wire end. Finally, we are ready to run the calculations again. If we plot the current distribution along the center element again, we will see that we have obtained again an almost sine function shape, with a slope discontinuity at the center due to the voltage source. If we plot the current distribution in the reflector element, we will see a practically perfect semi-cycle of a sine function because there are no voltage sources here. This current distribution comes from the interactions between the wires. The same happens with the current distribution in the director element. We can also plot the current distribution as a color map, by clicking on the Plot Current Distribution button in the toolbar. This plot allows us to compare the current intensities between different parts of the wire structure.
Finally, we will plot the radiation pattern. We have obtained a directional pattern, with the main lobe pointing towards the positive y-axis, and a secondary lobe pointing backwards, as expected. We could also plot the gain in decibels, where we can see more clearly the difference between the intensities of the main and secondary lobes. If we want to see the input impedance of the Yagi antenna, we have to select the wire where the voltage source is placed. Then, we choose the list currents option in the pop-up menu. After selecting the segment where the source is placed and clicking on the input list button below the trackbar, a table will be shown. We could also click on the 50% button to position the trackbar cursor at the middle of the wire. The displayed table will show the real and imaginary parts of the input impedance as a function of frequency. Thank you for your attention, and stay tuned.